Well, after uh, being out for a couple of years, and, and I can't think of a better place to come to than this. This is, a, as I told the players in the clubhouse, they're very fortunate uh, to be starting their careers in a, in, a, in a major league facility and in a major league town. Because it, it, <laughs> I told them not to take this for granted, because it, this isn't the way that it was in my era, and, and it's not the way that it is now, except for here. So. Um, you know, most of these guys have been with me for the last three months in Florida, and we've got a real good group here. It's a, it's a good group of guys, a, a talented group, and as we mix the, the June drafts in, I, I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna have a lot of fun this summer. Anyone in particular that you're really looking forward to watching on a day in, day out basis? Well, the the, the two kids on the left side of our infield, uh, Jose Rosario, uh, he's, he, he won't be 19 until November. He's a uh, uh, he's a five-tool player at shortstop that is very exciting to watch. I think the people are going to fall in love with him. Uh, it's kind of ironic that his favorite player is Hanley Ramirez because by the time he's 21 or 22, that's probably the type of player that he's, his skill set is going to be. And then right next to him, uh, his best friend and third baseman, uh, Johan Urania, is a switch hitter, that uh, another young guy that has really looked good in all facets of the game. So. And we, and we come here with uh, 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 the, 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 particularly the starting pitching was very impressive in Florida. So it, I think the fans are going to have some kids that they'll get attached to very quickly. And, and what I like is it's, it's a real good makeup of, of guys off the field that are very passionate about baseball and they're good citizens. So I think they're going to represent the Mets very well in the city here. What was it about this job that gave you the motivation to come out of the time and, and want to teach these kids? Uh, well, that's a good question. And, and you know, I, I did this for 40 years, and when I retired in mid-season with the Angels in 2011, my mom was diagnosed with terminal cancer. And I, I always assumed I would come back, but during the time I was taking care of my mom, uh, I kind of transferred my passion from baseball to golf, and I started playing a lot of tournaments. And um, I was already taking my pension, and I just thought, well, 40 years was enough. I didn't, I didn't really think about coming back. And then Paul D. Podesta called me just before spring training when the Mets lost Rich Donnelly, and we had a history at San Diego t uh, together and, and, and asked what he, I thought about coming out of retirement. And the more he talked about you know, th this, this franchise here in Brooklyn, and um, it just seemed exciting. And then. From the first day I got to Florida, all my passion was back, and I, I felt younger being around young people and stuff. So it's uh, you know now that we're here, uh, the best part is yet to come because play you know playing in this environment every day is going to be real, real lot of fun for the players and for the coaches. What do you think it will mean for the, some of these guys to get the experience of playing here in New York and you know get their feet wet in the Big Apple? Well, I think I think two things. No, number one, you know, they came from in Florida the last three months. We we, we don't play in front of any fans, and it's we play at at uh, 10, 11, and 12 o'clock in the morning. So certainly playing night baseball in front of the great fans here in Brooklyn, uh, it's gonna that that's in itself is gonna get their adrenaline running. So the intensity level. And uh, I think the, 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 their focus will be much greater on a day-to-day -day basis. And secondly, and a, a real perk, as I mentioned to these guys, is they're getting a chance early in their career to play in front of a lot of fans, to, which, which will help them someday ease the transition when they get to the big leagues. Because, uh, you know, I've always preached my whole career that every player, manager, coach, and umpire should spend one year in winter ball uh, because the fans are so rapid that for people that haven't seen uh, a game in Venezuela or the Dominican in, in, the, in winter baseball, just turn on a European soccer game and that's what the crowds are like. And it, it, that, that, that is, when guys get to double and triple A, that experience of being in that environment, particularly when the fans are not with you even at home if you're not doing well, it helps to toughen a guy's skin up for when he goes as a big leaguer goes into Philadelphia, New York, or Chicago to prepare for that. So my job is to, to give them an all an opportunity to play and to mold them into a, a cohesive unit where they can get the most out of their ability. And you know we'll see what the competition is like with the rest of the clubs, but we're certainly, uh, we're certainly coming out here expecting to win. Somebody has to win, and I've always felt it might as well be us since we're here.
coach, how do you get the guys ready for the season in such a short period of time? Well, the, the 22 of them have been together for 102 days in Florida, because I counted them. And then with the June drafts, it's just a matter of them slow. Some of these guys haven't played. Their college season ended uh, three weeks to a month ago, so we've kind of got to get them back into uh, game shape, and, and and then through the daily practices and the team meetings, we'll 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 blend them in into the, the team concept, and I, I anticipate that that'll happen very quickly. Knowing that at this level, a lot of these guys are going to make mistakes, and you're going to do a lot of teaching. Uh, mm -hmm. Knowing that some nights you might, you know, end up with a headache or something like that—is that something that's daunting to you, or is it just you know, comes with the territory? You know, after after 40 years, not, nothing will give me a headache. I mean, there's nothing that can happen that I haven't seen or experienced in my in my tenure. Um, I'm going to get a kick out of seeing how thrilled they are, you know, playing at Staten Island tomorrow and open it up here on Saturday. From for the except for a couple of the college kids, the rest of them have never never played in front of crowds like this before, and and some of them may go through. It would be they wouldn't be human if they didn't go through a little stage fright, and and we've talked about that. You know, I I've I've, 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 I've jokingly always referred to that as the sphincter factor. I said you you and, and 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 I do that specifically to make guys laugh, to try to take the pressure off them, to make them realize that the sooner that they can get through that the sooner that they can focus on the task at hand instead of being aware of everything that's going on around them, the sooner that they'll, their, their true skills will come out. Because you have to be relaxed and focused to play this game. You can't worry about the outside elements. Casey Weisner got the start on the morning tomorrow night. What, no, Saturday, Saturday night. night. Saturday. What about him made you uh, yeah, well, first off, tomorrow night we're going to start with Octavio uh, Acosta mainly because he played a winner in Mexico. And as a rookie, he only pitched 10 innings. But he, I managed in Mexico back in 04 in Hermosillo. And, you know, the crowds down there can be eight to 10,000 people. So his experience factor, we felt, was going to be a good thing where he would be. He's been through it to be able to focus on the task at hand. And then we're going to give Meisner the one day tomorrow to view it from outside the fishbowl, so to speak. And in Florida, he he had, he had couldn't have possibly had a better spring down in Florida. I mean, he's a young kid, one year removed from high school, but uh, you know he throws 93 miles an hour. He's got a very good changeup. And in the spring, he, he he developed a pretty good curveball to go with it. So he's he's got he's got two real good pitches, and he's developing the third. And for a youngster, he's got pretty good feel for the strike zone and dominant stuff. So uh, uh, he reminds me a lot of a pitcher we had in my tenure at Kansas City. We had a he made the All Star team one year, a guy named Mike McDougal. They're both tall, lanky, red-haired, freckle-faced guys that are blessed with God-given ability and. But, but fortunately, Meisner has better control than, than McDougal ever did. So uh, we expect good things out of him. You mentioned Rosario, he's one of the top prospects in the men's organization. What are your expectations for him for the year, and what does he need to work on this year? Well, all these guys have to work on their consistency. I mean, that's what pro ball is about. It's, it's, it's you know, the, the kids that come to us out of high school are used to playing Tuesdays and Fridays. The college guys, Tuesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, and maybe Sundays. But now that they're in pro ball, we're going to play 76 games in 81 days. It's a matter of grinding it out every single day, and whether you're tired or not, trying to find a level of consistency in your play. And Rosario has all the tools to... You know, in my tenure, I was with the Angels twice. In my first tenure, I got to manage Eric Ibar at the AA level. In my second go-around, I managed Gene Segura. And I love both of those guys, and they're both not only in the big leagues, but Segura has already been an all-star, but Rosario has as much or more talent than both of those guys, and he's only 18. So, like I say, the, the people, you know, he's going to make his mistakes because he's an 18-year-old kid, but the raw ability gets there. I'm glad he's, I'm glad he's playing for us and not against us. Coach, I don't know if you already said this, but what do you think about the ballpark and the atmosphere of Coney Island? Oh, it's spectacular. I mean, it's 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 a it's a complete big league environment. You know, I mean, the only difference is that there's 7,500 seats instead of 47,000. But other than that, it's a uh, the facilities in the clubhouse, outside the playing surface. It's a major league facility, and uh, you know, like I say, it's going to raise their intensity level, and we're uh, we're looking forward to getting started. I hope the weather cooperates.